My name is Carl Nordlund. I'm a Swedish uh, researcher working at Central European University as a postdoc. Uh, my hobby is crocheting and arcade games from the 70s and 80s, particularly the cultural history of arcade games. Um, these two hobbies have sort of uh, been combined in a very fruitful way, I think, because I, I spend my typically my afternoon sitting in my couch and crocheting space invaders from Bombjack and Pac-Man Ghosts. It's really nice to have something to do uh, while uh, resting from work in, in this way. Um, I, this particular aspect with video games and arcade games, I'm not really high-tech in this or professional scholar in video game history. However, it's, uh, it has definitely become a central part of the cultural history of mankind. Uh, since 1979, when Space Available was released, it has sort of become a pop cultural icon of today. And uh, we all know what Pac-Man is and so forth. And just the other day, Grand Theft Auto V was released and it has become a huge success. And uh, it, it's... Uh, it's, video games has become similar to movies and books, big releases, big media productions. And uh, we should not forget these poor space invaders or these Pac-Man ghosts because they are a sort of part of the lineage that is cultural history of video gaming. And it's also important to lift them up because we have a tendency to look at contemporary phenomena like video games in the 79 when uh, the British Parliament tried to stop them with the space invaders bill because they caused the deviance in society. Uh, it's important that we recognize these as the starters, the, st the, s the start of uh, uh, an important aspect of humanity to play. These days we work so much through computers. We work, we virtualize the world. Uh, we do bank transactions, shopping, we communicate. Uh, virtually, and we are using computers sort of to, they became as filters to reality when we design houses or artwork, we work with computers. Uh, so we're virtualizing reality constantly, and it's not a bad thing or a good thing, I would just say it's a, it's a fact that we're doing this. Um, the funny thing is that these characters have never been anything but virtual, they've always been in their digital shape, they've never been sort of uh, a space invader doesn't sort of reflect a real space invader. This, this is the original source of the, of the image or the character. However, by crocheting this, we are sort of dragging it back into reality. We are sort of going the other way. We are de-virtualizing something into artifacts. And this printer has taken one step further by, through their screen printing of my crocheted work, it becomes a sampling of a sample. It becomes sort of, uh, we, we are continuing further and pushing these characters more into reality, into a different medium. And the funny thing is the discrepancies that then might appear, uh, that one can feel exist there. And uh, it's been really fun to work with Printa and they have sort of interpreted my interpretations. And this sort of two steps interpretation uh, creates pretty interesting art. It was uh, one of my best friends in Malmö, in Sweden, who wanted me to crochet because her husband wasn't really interested in it. And I thought, yeah, sure, I can learn how to crochet. And I thought it was pretty fun. I taught her how to repair arcade game machines because I gave it to them as a wedding present. Uh, so it was sort of an exchange of knowledge. She taught me how to crochet and I taught her how to do digital ele electronics. And uh, then I realized that the two could be combined. So I just started then trying to crochet uh, video game characters. And it's, uh, it's, um, it's pretty tricky, but I came up with a technique where the thread is embedded and uh, where you carry the th different threads and which make it look the same on both sides. Um, this makes it very suitable for putting on windows or using as uh, glass underlays and so forth because they, they mirror each other on both sides. And um, it can be used for anything. Procheting is very sort of slow handicraft. It takes quite a lot of time. Stitching or knitting takes a lot, uh, it goes a lot faster. With crocheting to make an earring with really small thread, it takes me about four hours to make one earring. To make a pair of earrings, it takes eight hours. So you have to have patience and you have to have, you not something you really can rush it. It's a, it's a sort of a sort of slow art.
slow like slow food it's it's a, it's a slow art form and it's very difficult to mass produce and it's pretty much impossible to mass produce i would say because then you will get bored with this well it's supposed to be fun and it is fun Thank you.